Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is honestly a little bit of a spur of the moment video. It's probably going to be a bonus extra video this week, but it's a topic that I was just honestly so fired up about and wanted to address specifically. So a couple months back, handful of months back, Tyler and I made a video before we got married on waiting for marriage. And the video essentially does a deep dive into really the theology of sex, about how God created it and really the why behind his heart or his desire, his command for us to save sex and to save physical intimacy for marriage. And so check that video out if you want to understand more of that and just the why behind that. But in that video, we also went into more of the practical side of things. So if our goal is to, you know, pursue purity and to wait for marriage, practically what are some things we can do to help us in that? And one of those practical principles of wisdom was what I want to dive deeper into in this video as well. And it is to date someone whose goal is also to honor God with their bodies, with their relationships, with their very lives. So why I want to make a whole separate video on this is because Tyler and I actually gave a message last night at our church's youth group on the very same topic we made that first video about. So we went into, again, the theology of sex, God's heart for it, and these practical principles for wisdom in dating. And as we were prepping our message, we were kind of going through our notes from that first video, and then we were also kind of adding a couple of things to it just with things we've gleaned over the past couple months in being married and different things that we thought of and one of the points that we really added to was this point of date someone whose goal is to honor God. So the main thing we added to this point was actually a story that a friend of mine shared with me that got both Tyler and I so pumped up and so we want to share it with you here as well in this video today but before I do I want to just explain what the point we were making was. Essentially we were just saying that you know it is important to date somebody who is not just willing to go along with your desire to wait for marriage or to pursue purity or to honor God but somebody who also has that desire on their own simply because if they don't it should raise the deeper question of does this person truly have a desire to honor God and to obey God in all areas of their life now this doesn't mean that you need to date someone who's perfect because nobody is this also does not mean that you need to date someone who has a perfect past because there's nothing that is beyond God's ability to forgive and to redeem and to restore. But this does mean that if the person you're dating doesn't have a present desire to want to seek God and honor God and to repent and get back up when they stumble, then once again, this should raise that deeper question of, does this person truly have a transforming relationship with Jesus? And so here now is the story my friend shared with me that I think is so powerful. This friend of mine, she desires marriage. She wants a godly husband. And recently she was telling me about these dates that she was going on with this guy and they sounded great. This guy sounded great. He, you know, was telling her all about his faith and the church that he goes to and how he was plugged in and involved in serving. And so they are going on these dates and they're going well and they get to date number four. And as the date's winding down, he was like, what do you think about going back to my place? And we all know what that means, right? And she was like, oh, I don't know. Why don't we just like kind of keep walking around this downtown area or whatever? And he brings it up again and then again. And finally she's like, you know what? I just want to be clear here. Like I am waiting for marriage. And he was like, what? And he was just super taken aback, which I think is weird because he's talking about all of these things about his faith and being involved in the church to even if he wasn't doing that on his own or had that desire on his own, the fact that he thought it was so strange that she was, that that wasn't at least a familiar concept to him was strange to me, but he was so taken aback and he's like, you know, that's really not how I saw things going. Like what I see for myself is that, you know, I plan to date someone and then if that's going well, then we'll move in together. And then if that's going well, then maybe we'll think about marriage. And so I really wasn't expecting this. Like I'm going to need to think about it. And she was like, you know what? Let me think for you. Like this isn't going to work. And I was so, so proud of her when she was telling me this story, because I think it could have been so easy in her desire for a relationship to be like, well, you know, maybe he'll be willing to go along with it. Like, let's just see. And maybe she could have even framed it or flipped it in a way that sounded honorable, right? Like, well, maybe he'll be willing to respect my values. But the reality is, is that if he had come back and said, okay, I've given it some thought and I'm willing to go along with this, or I'm willing to, you know, respect this, then what 
probably would have happened is they would have started dating and likely that line probably would have slowly gotten pushed just a little bit further each time. And when all was said and done, whether they ended up together or not, there probably would have been things that happened in that relationship that she never wanted to happen. But she knew that she wanted a guy who was not only willing to go along with her desire to wait, she wanted a guy who had that desire on his own because she wants a guy who wants to follow Jesus, who wants to obey Jesus, who wants to submit his life to him. And guys, this is so important because what's at stake here is not simply what happens or does not happen physically in your relationship, though that is big, though that is weighty. What's at stake here is literally the rest of your life, your future marriage. This right here is a good indicator of, again, whether that person wants to truly follow Jesus, obey Jesus, honor him, and seek him. And that's going to have implications far beyond what happens in your dating relationship or during engagement. Engagement. That is going to have implications for your whole life. It's going to determine whether or not your husband is going to be somebody who wants to seek God in the decisions you make together as a family, who wants to seek God in determining how you're going to raise your kids, who wants to love you well, not just because you're dating or you're engaged or you're newly married and you have all these honeymoon feelings well, but who wants to love you well because he loves Jesus first and he wants to be obedient to Jesus in terms of how he is called to love you as his wife. And so you want somebody who loves Jesus more than he loves you, who loves Jesus us more than he loves himself, somebody who has Jesus as the Lord of his life, the master of his life, rather than being ruled by his own fleshly impulses, which might be in your favor in one moment, but maybe not the next. And so I just want to encourage you guys that this is the area not to settle in when it comes to this person's relationship with Jesus, his love for Jesus, his desire to seek and obey and honor Jesus. That is the area to not settle in. Something else Tyler brought up as we were hitting on this point in our message last night is that guys are to take leadership in this area, but that leadership is to be modeled after the leadership of Jesus. And what Jesus demonstrates for us is a servant leadership. He came not to be served, but to serve. And he talked more about this again in our video on boundaries for dating. I'll have it linked. But essentially he was talking about how leadership doesn't just say, what can I get from this? But leadership says, what can I give? And love, he was talking about how you know, we tend to really just not understand what that means in our culture. But biblically, the definition of love is to give of oneself for the good of others, which is exactly what Jesus did, exactly what he modeled for us. And so if we are in a dating relationship or any relationship before marriage, and we say we love that person, then we should truly seek to show that love by protecting them and honoring them and not taking anything from them that is not yet ours. And so I just want to share that with you guys. I know that the weight is hard, but there are godly men out there, and I promise you that they are worth the wait. If you want some more encouragement in this area, I wrote a devotional on singleness a couple years back. I'll have it linked down in the description if you want to check it out, but I hope that you enjoyed this video or found it helpful. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and then also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!